Are you like me and absolutely fascinated by orcs? No, not those things and certainly not that thing. That's an urukai, not even an orc, you absolute bombardil. I'm talking about these. This here is an example of a space orc, an odd radio circle in space. And they're so delicious because we really don't know what the heck they are. But let's take a closer look because today space is back on the menu, boys. <laughs> In 2022, we got the clearest images yet of these orcs. Not from JWST like every other image released this year, but from Meerkat. This is an array of 64 radio telescopes in the Northern Cape of South Africa. It's a precursor to an even larger array that will be called SKA, the Square Kilometer Array, because eventually when all of the dishes are built, their collective dish area that collects light will be a square kilometer. It's the perfect instrument for looking at these orcs because, and this is rare in astronomy, but they're actually really well named. They're odd circles in space that only seem to emit light in radio waves and not at all in any other wavelength of light. They're also huge, possibly the largest radio structures ever seen, spreading approximately 50 times further across than the diameter of the Milky Way galaxy we live in. Now, check out the increase in resolution we've seen in just a couple of years. Here, the Meerkat image is on the right, while an older image from 2020 is on the left. Admittedly, the image doesn't quite have the fine resolution of a Hubble or JWST image, but that's largely because it's a radio image and radio light is a much longer wavelength than the visible light of Hubble or even the infrared light of Webb. The rule goes that the longer the wavelength you're looking at, the lower the resolution of your image. Despite this, in these latest images, we can still see some interesting structures in the orcs. We see a few different ring fronts here and the authors of the paper that revealed the image, that's Norris et al, offer these interpretations where either there's a front ring and a back ring or maybe it's a polar ring and an equatorial ring. These are only interpretations because we're looking at a 2D projection of a 3D shell shape. So it's hard to know for sure what's connected to what here and what the exact structure details might be. By this, I just mean that the orc will be a 3D object in space, but the telescope picture we see is just a 2D image. So we lose some of the details in this projection. Still though, we see what seems to be some rings and a whole bunch of other structures in there too. The reason these blobby shell-like radio circles are still so interesting is we don't know what causes them. The first one was discovered in 2019. And so far we've only got five confirmed orc discoveries. Although there are a few more candidates that could turn out to be real observations too. One thing that these orcs all seem to have in common though, is that they all seem to be very distant at around a billion light years away. They also seem to always surround galaxy hosting very active radio loud supermassive black holes in their centers. This has led to the leading theory of their formation, which is that there's some form of radiation ejected from a huge explosion or other very energetic event in the galaxy, probably involving that very active black hole. And we're basically seeing this huge expanding shockwave growing out of the galaxy. This event could even have been the merger of two supermassive black holes and the orc might be a remnant of that merger. Here, we can see a simulation showing what the process in this theory would look like. And we see the evolution of the explosion and the expanding shockwave over a billion years. By comparing this with the actual observation from Meerkat, we can see that we can reproduce what we see very accurately indeed. That doesn't necessarily mean that it is the correct theory, of course, but it's certainly a good sign. Other theories that might give rise to the orcs include starburst termination shock. Essentially, this is after an active period of star formation in the central galaxy. And that combined with the resultant supernovae as these stars die can create a lot of outward radiation. Perhaps for some reason, this is mostly visible in radio and this gives us the orcs. Another possibility is that the active black holes create large radio jets or lobes around the galaxy. This could be like the Fermi gamma radiation bubbles that we think are around the Milky Way, but in radio instead. We would then have to be viewing those from above or below so that rather than seeing a lobe, we just see a circular shape instead. Maybe a better comparison here would have been the actual radio lobes around the Centaurus A galaxy. But I just really like the Fermi bubbles and wanted an excuse to mention them here. Alternatively, it could be a jet instead of a lobe, maybe like the famous one out of M87, but again, made out of radio light instead. And also we're seeing it from the danger end, 
downwind, end on, however you want to put it, this could be another answer. None of these explanations are perfect it seems, but they haven't been ruled out yet either. We need to understand why they're only emitted in radio waves, why they seem to be so rare and so faint and only appear in very distant galaxies, and why the orcs seem to be brighter on the edges too. It's also possible that maybe two or more of these explanations can cause these orcs, and the different orcs we've seen could be created by different events. More simulations and modeling will help with this of course, but the best thing we could do to answer this is observe more orcs and hope that bigger number statistics start to give us a front-running theory. This is a very rare case where all of us here are hoping for more orcs. Legolas, what do you I see? Let me know any questions, comments, or shocking theories you have down below. What did you say? And if you're new here, subscribe to the channel for more fun space-based content. Until next time, stay safe team. I'll see you soon. Bye.